The Waxnail FPV system has gotten better and better since it was released more than a year ago. But one of the biggest criticisms that I had on the day that it was released still hasn't been addressed, at least in my opinion. And that criticism is that when you go from 700 milliwatts to one watt or 1 1.2 watts, 1200 milliwatts, the system doesn't seem to get that much better. You do seem to get more output power and range does seem to get slightly better, but the stability of the signal really suffers. Today, we're gonna to take a look at something that Walksnail has showed that you can change about your goggles today that might fix this? I don't know, but we're gonna try it out. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. We don't know the true reason that the walk snail system doesn't seem to perform as well at 1200 milliwatts as it seems like it ought to. At 700 milliwatts, it seems fairly close to DJI. And then at 1200 milliwatts, DJI seems to do way better. And the specific way that it's better is in the stability of the link. The megabits per second doesn't seem to stay as high. It seems to drop down and go up and down and the latency is all over the place. Whereas at 700 milliwatts, Waxnail is pretty solid. And at 1200 milliwatts, DJI is pretty solid. Now, figuring this out is pretty much out of the reach of a typical RC hobbyist because measuring the output power of a bi-directional system with four radios and four antennas is pretty difficult. If we were to put a power meter on one of these antennas, the goggle could just say, oh, something's up with that antenna. I'm not getting signal that I expect. And it would just maybe switch to another one. Um, but I think it's safe to assume that the goggles probably make the output power that they say they do. I think what's happening is that the RF amplifier is being driven too hard. And when you drive an RF amplifier too hard, what you get is a stronger, louder signal, but it is less clear, it is distorted. And uh, today we have a suggestion from Walksnail as to a way to recalibrate the RF amplifier to maybe get a cleaner signal. That's what I'm gonna show you. The next thing we need to do is power up our video transmitter and our goggles, and we will follow the instructions in this comment from the Walksnail Facebook page. And the first thing we have to do is we have to set the goggles to, uh, I think we have to set them to max power. So let's set them to 1200 milliwatts. I do have, you may hear it over there, I do have a fan blowing on the video transmitter to keep it from overheating. So we'll set those to 1200 milliwatts and we're gonna make sure that standby mode is off so it actually goes to 1200 milliwatts. The next step is going to be to go to the display menu and set the display to 10%. And I guess they think that no one will ever do this because when you set the display to 10%, it actually stays at 100% and shows you a whole bunch of debugging information. And the information we are most concerned with is this right here, S colon 26.0, G colon 29.0. Those are the output power in DBM for, I assume S is the video transmitter and G is the goggles. Oh yes, yeah, sky and ground. That's Waxnail's uh, per terms for the video transmitter and the goggles. But if I'm reading this comment correctly, the period here is not a decimal point well, it is a decimal point, but it's not saying we're at 26.0 dBm. Instead, what it's showing is 26 dBm and a calibration level of zero. And so this number can read one, two, zero, minus one, and so forth, and it will sort of tweak or trim the calibration of the video transmitter and the goggles. So here's what uh, Walksnail says to do. We're gonna take a blank SD card, and on that blank SD card, we're gonna make a new text file. We're gonna name that text file avatar underscore cal dot txt, and I'm gonna type it exactly as they show it with a capital A, etc. And then we're gonna go into that file, and in that file, we're gonna put a number that is one less than the calibration value that we see for our video transmitter. So in my case, the calibration value is 26.0. The calibration is zero, so we're gonna put minus one. We're gonna save that file, and then we're gonna put that on the internal storage of the video transmitter, not the goggles, but the video transmitter. So I'm gonna plug the USB adapter into the video transmitter and plug that into my computer, power everything up, and then 
Once we do that, a new USB drive should appear on the computer that is the internal storage for the video transmitter. And we're just gonna take the avatar underscore cal.txt file and we're gonna drag it onto the internal storage. From there, we will power cycle. And then let's see if uh, it has worked. No, nope, the value has changed. The fact that that value changed tells me that this has worked, but the real question is, is my VTX and your VTX gonna be any better? I'm a little bit skeptical because uh, the problem, according to Walksnail, is that some VTXs are coming out of the factory with the calibration value too high. That is causing the amplifier to work too hard and, I don't know, overdrive, distort, whatever it is that it's doing. So if I saw a number of one or two and I turned it down to zero or one, maybe that would be consistent with the story. But my value was already not that high and now I've gone one lower than that. So it seems like what we're doing here is we're making the video transmitter weaker in an attempt to make the signal cleaner. At least the option is out there though. I'm happy to be able to share this with you. And if you have a problem where one watt or 1200 milliwatts is not as stable as you'd like, you can at least try this and see if it gives you better results. At a certain point, you're just gonna turn it down so low that one watt isn't one watt anymore. In fact, are you turning down the calibration values across the whole range? Or are you just turning down the values for the upper two? Are you making all your video transmitter values weaker? I don't have an answer for that. All we have is this one little parameter or one little comment. But it's better than nothing. And I do appreciate Walksnail being so uh, responsive and giving us this secret internal debugging information. Let me know down in the comments if this seemed to help for you. You know, there's another feature of the Walksnail system that involves a little bit of manual tweaking, but gives a really, really cool result. And that is custom OSD fonts. Did you know that you can change the OSD font so that it looks much nicer than the default font? A nice, smooth, high definition, colorful font. I've got a tutorial that shows you how to do that. And I'll put a card on screen about that. In addition, Walksnail supports high definition canvas, which you're definitely gonna want if you're using those special fonts. But even if you're not, it's still pretty useful. And I'll put a card on screen to my tutorial about how to do that as well. I'll see you there.